First, I want to say that I highly respect Randall Carlson, and I believe that I have learned more from him in the last year than I have in the 50 previous years. I'm really a nobody compared to Randall Carlson. I'm just an amateur researcher doing online map engine referencing, looking at older maps, trying to compare them, and trying to better understand the history of this world. But according to your most recent videos, the best place to look for Atlantis is around the Azores Islands or at these plateaus that are underwater in the Atlantic Ocean. First, I wholeheartedly acknowledge that the Rashad concentric circles is about four times larger than what Plato wrote about, considering that a stadium measurement from the Egyptians was about 209 meters and I do have to acknowledge that there is a lack of megalithic structures that being said there are a bunch here that are creating a henge and they're not just on the mountain downslope here but they're at the top of the mountain up a little bit higher you find a bunch of stuff but they're all circular stones of some type. We definitely want to get some close-up pictures of that. However, one thing that the Rashad structure does have that the theory of the middle of the Atlantic doesn't have is Plato's South Plain. They were about 400 kilometers one direction. I'm going to go a little more to about 600 kilometers in the perpendicular direction and it created a perimeter of about 2,000 kilometers, maybe more. So when you take a look at this rectangle, and you put it on top of your Azores Islands, or you put it on top of your underwater plateaus, which you discuss in your recent videos, you still don't see these ancient million year striations coming from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, or suture as Randall put it. There's no place that a southern plain could have collapsed into the ocean. That would have been 20 to 50,000 years old, whereas the striations you see under the Atlantic Ocean are millions of years old. So there's no way that they would just disappear on top of those. Here you see a big area that could have been the southern plain. And whether or not you start here and put the eye in the middle, or you start at the eye and have a southern plain, as Plato described, you still see a lot of residual things in this whole area. This interesting sub Atlantic grid also doesn't meet the Plato requirements. Even Spain has a bit of a problem when it comes to being the location, not just because it's all mountains and there's no plain that's that big. Not possible, is it? It is also much more than that with Spain, with the fact that that belonged to Atlas's brother. If you check into what Plato wrote, the Cadiz uh, was where Plato's brother was, and I think he was across from it, but maybe he was actually on it. Regardless, there's no concentric circles in there, we know, because that's Spain. We also know that Plato said that the Atlanteans went as far east as the Tyranian Sea, and he actually mentioned Egypt. Maybe Herodotus's map is actually being quite conservative when you compare the Atlantis going all the way over to Egypt. That's a big difference. So maybe the Herodotus map was a little bit later, but the Temen Reset River was definitely long dried up when Herodotus was looking at it. Plato mentions the diver islands as well as the island of Atlantis. These diver islands were located out in the open sea. So it's because he made reference to the diver islands and he also uh, made reference to the Tyranian Sea, I think that it's a little bit ridiculous not to think that this whole area wasn't part of the whole Atlantis or King Atlas or Poseidon family lot. The truth is, is now we understand that the Aztecs were also calling their gods Aztlan or Atlantis. That was 2,250 years ago. There's a great video called The History of Atlantis. I have to give him credit. One of the things that he points out is that the impassable barrier of mud statement that Plato made could mean, of course, to follow the shore. And where's the best place? Well, there is a big 30 kilometer mud bank that's been just off where the Tamanra said exited, right there by Cape Timorous. Cape Timorous is just south of where the Tamanra said exited. Cape Blanco is just north. It's been called Cape Blanco for hundreds of years. The ancient Maghreb Sea fed the Tamanra said. It also fed another river over here. There were several rivers, and there's evidence of having several small lakes, not just one large one. It depended on which point in history you were talking about. Just like the Mississippi River, there are a lot of tributary rivers that will feed into it without hitting the ocean. The Tamman Reset was coming from this direction. 
And one of the things that you can still see under these sand striations are some type of ancient canal. There's some type of a dam going across. These ancient lines are still visible. What are they? Are they canals? Are they walls? According to the topography map, they look like walls, but they could be the walls next to canals. These sand dunes are 1,000 feet higher. You've got these lines going all throughout this whole area. Was this an ancient shoreline? You're looking at the Rashad structure. And not only do you have ancient shorelines going around the inside, but you have them going all along the north end of the the mountain side and that is a really tall mountain. The Taman Reset River used to run right along the Rashad structure, along the northern escarpment of the entire mountain range that exists today. In fact, there is a shoreline and the residual signs of an ancient lake that even has dams built across it, probably as it was receding in height, but these shorelines are as high as 2,000 feet above sea level. Look at this gigantic arc found by an associate named Michelle. Michelle's Ark is about 18 kilometers long and it leads right up to a canal that goes around to the other side of the mountains. That canal is about four kilometers long but it gets covered up with sand. You don't know where it goes. In addition to that, it could be the actual circular ditch that Plato described. It's actually that big. But it's probably one of the most beautiful parts this was an ancient lake right here. It's getting covered up by the sand coming from the Lake Maghreb. Down in the middle here where this whole crater strike or impact, you can see it right there. Right next to it, there's an ancient canal that could be going across to that ancient lake on the north side, about 4.8 kilometers long. And uh, it's kind of exciting when you think about how it could have been covered with sand and disappeared. But look at it. It's right there. I mean, it's nice and straight. And here's another one. This whole thing is like a ancient shoreline that was full of water and almost could go across that mountain. You get down to the other end of the whole structure and you look at these other massive possible, they're like 50 miles long each, these possible circular ditches, a stadium across maybe two, and there's the weird ancient canals that could have led to the ocean that go right through that mountaintop. This is actually a little bit uh, off the main mountain, but you've got these really super long canals that are right on the top of the mountain. Where are they going? I think they're going to the other side, to the ocean. There was a lot of water up there. There was a shoreline up there with a supply of water up there. That's 20 kilometers long, but that's not the longest one. I mean, look at this thing. This thing goes directly perpendicular, and it goes across those mountains, and it's like 63 kilometers long. And then this one here, which I think is pretty incredible, that's like 74 kilometers long. I'm not sure if you can say that those aren't man-made canals at this point. Was it the feeding river? Tamen Reset right there and if it was not here it was at least somewhere in between both but with tributary rivers feeding the ocean that was so close I think there was plenty of chance to have rivers throughout this whole area. Okay let's get to the bottom line. The bottom line is I discovered that we're doomed. There's the Tenemore Crater just north, about 200 kilometers. There's a several other craters nearby, including this thing, which is right there next to the Rashad structure. Now, I don't believe the Rashad structure was a crater. If anything, it was some type of dome geology, right? There are millions of years. Or was it actually created by the kings, as Plato said? That's not something I'm interested in worrying about, but is this some type of cosmic impact strike? Could it have contributed to the Younger Dryas event? It doesn't fall within the boundary lines that I've seen. But one thing I have seen is there are some mountains missing right in the middle of the Rashad structure. That circle that we've always thought was called the quarry or some type of a plain well it seems like it's not just a plain but it's a crater that's been hit with water so long that the ridges have been worn away but it's almost a perfect 2.2 kilometer circle and i believe that that is the comet fracture or i believe that's the event that took out atlantis i do believe a comet did strike bullseye right in the middle wouldn't dome geology have created something that looked more like this as opposed to this i think that's what took out atlantis and since there's so many other craters around i want to know where the string of pearls sahara is located 